talked about uh, changing your your perception of the spider. Okay. Now, so many times in the past, in fact, it still happens now, unless you you've been plugged into an instructor that happens to be more recent. Is how many people grew up with the pain day philosophy? And you do something wrong, and you get the snot whacked out of you, and you go home, and oh man, I can't do more for a week. <laughs> Why couldn't you just say, don't do that? You know, it, it's still positive and negative reinforcement, okay? And that's the school of thought that I grew up in, and uh, I even taught in that regard for, for a, a, a while. Um, but it's a flawed way of approaching what happens is people get injured, they can't come out, they can't practice. So practice, practice, actually I should say training. <coughs> training needs to be safe. You train. Okay. And if you're in the military or uh, on the police force or even in the EMT, or even, you know, depending on uh, what you do for a living. Um, some people that are like park rangers and whatnot, you know, you have all these other things that you actually have, these dangerous activities that you have to train. So that when we go to actually execute these things, we're safe. We're safe. Okay. So we're talking about training, we're talking about practice. So totally two different things. So instead of training in a fashion of where people go home with, with hematomas that are debilitating for months on end, or we got torn up knees or sprained ankles, what we need to do is, is we need to dial that back in the training session. Actually, when we're training, what we're going to do is we're going to increase the ability to absorb knowledge much, much faster. All right. Now, if I were to go to any of you and say, unless you're uh, a, a construction expert, I just, I just use this example. So, if we have any construction people in here, or carpenters, uh, just bear with me. You'll, you'll, if I said, build me a house, how many people can really build a house? You can't build a house. There's no way. There's too much involved. I mean, the, 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 the house is too complex. But if I said, okay, get a shovel, dig a hole, make it square. Okay, I can do that. Dig a hole. All right. See that big pile of cinder blocks over there? Yep. All right. Put those in the ground. Put them in there. Okay. Little two bites over there? Yep. Okay. Build another square on top of that and start running them every 18 inches. Right here. And you guys can start see where I'm going. Okay. We can put walls on it and then we build the next floor, okay? And then, then we build it, you know, some of the joists are there. You understand, when we break it down in smaller and smaller and smaller pieces, it becomes pretty easy. So that the task is not overwhelming. And that's really what we're getting at. Is we're going to break down fighting in smaller and smaller things. Hey, there's a man that's a graduate of the Church of the Stick. But he's learned that the pain bank philosophy is the incorrect philosophy. We just talked about that. So, it's okay though. You've got to be able to put some smack down. So, that's what we're doing, guys, really. What we're doing is we're taking this big, huge, complex thing and we're, 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 we're shrinking it down in the very small bits of information that we can compartmentalize and analyze and then utilize in the correct order. Okay. Another analogy I use is this. Is this. Who would hear your place checkers? Rules are pretty simple, right? So is the play. Who would hear place checks? I didn't say play chess well. <laughs> I said play chess. And that's my point. Right. Okay? Most fighters are playing chess. You got those groups of individuals, they're playing chess. And not only are they playing chess, they're playing chess at a high level. So, it's easy to understand the rules of chess. But the possibilities are endless as far as play goes. And that's what you, you, you're, you're really trying to do. Okay. You're going to have to spend time with this to master this. This is, this is not going to, you know, you'll get a moment today where the light bulb does come on, but that's really the beginning. You need to start spending time. So, there's three phases of the learning. There's the training part. There's the practice part, and there's the evaluation.
evaluate. All right. I thought about this. I talked this class. I talked this class. I talked this class. And I feel confident now because it's the best one that I've seen that's out there. All right. In the training session, think about it this way. Think about fighting and being a math class. So we go training. All right. We're in class, you know. We're learning it, and we're learning it, and you know they teach us. You know, I'm like, okay, this is different. Okay, we got it. Good deal. All right. Now the practice part. Homework. Homework, guys. Just go around, spend time out of class, and doing this stuff on your own. Okay. Homework, 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 homework. Practice, 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 practice. That work.
can guarantee you I can find things wrong with your fight. Uh, so you need to really think about you know, what you're doing on and off the field. And I say all of this because a trap that people fall into is it, it, it's multifaceted. It, 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 there's a variety of traps that they fall into. They're not on off with themselves. And they're not on with their opponents that they're, that, they're, that they're fighting with. And they're not on with people that they're training. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to be rude. It doesn't mean that you have to be mean. What it means is, is if being polite it doesn't work for your student, sometimes you have to use other techniques that might seem a little more aggressive. And you have to be able to adjust the thing. But if you're not honest with yourself, you're not going to continue to improve as, as a fighter. And this, this, this flows into this next trap that, that it happens a lot for unbelts. Unbelts that start getting success, what happens is they get comfortable. And, and, and it happens for a lot of nights, too. It, 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 it does. It's not just unbelts. But what happens is, is that point where people really start to succeed. They start putting all these elements together. And they Start, start racking up body count and, and start, you know, winning. All right. They're really no longer focusing on the fighting. What they're focusing on is they're focusing on their ego. Okay, and they're lying to themselves. Okay, so they're comfortable in their process. So I'm going to keep doing this and do all this stuff because look at all these tournaments I'm in. Look at all these people. I go to I go to practice and I just destroy everybody. Well, okay. All right, well, let's go back to the, the math test now. All right. Second grade math, easier than eighth grade math, isn't it, guys? Eighth grade math is easier than tenth grade math. Then we go to college. Then we get advanced degrees, okay? So that's your progression, all right? So if you're comfortable and you think that you are a world leader, well, come to me, and I'll introduce you to some guys that will change the perspective of your world. They will give you a harsher evaluation. They will give you a harder test. Okay? So what we'll do is we'll find deficiencies. We'll go back. We'll train. Train those deficiencies out. We'll practice those deficiencies, eliminating them. Then we'll go back for another evaluation. Okay? Across the rest of the SDA, not so much here in this kingdom, Crown list is the ultimate evaluation. And it still kind of is here because, you know, there's no excuses. Um, but really a better evaluation in, in our kingdom happens to be uh, candle mass, uh, Christmas turning, um, Val Day when it's a tournament, when it's a melee thing, not so much. Red Dragon's kind of starting to be there, and we, and we have a couple other ones. Um, but primarily Christmas turning and candle mass are big, evaluation point because winning crown this year sucks guys and the reason it is it is so much work it's so much work so you'll have a lot of fighters that are capable of giving you a correct evaluation but won't fight in certain tournaments because they don't want to deal with the consequences of winning those tournaments so if you're really thinking about the fighting and not winning, then you need to go to these evaluations, okay? Other types of evaluations are private practices, all right? Ronis and I have set them up a great many times. Like, okay, listen, no new guys. You bring your best three guys you got. I'm bringing my best three, and if I don't have three, I'm bringing two or one. And I'll you know, spread the word. And it's a limited thing. And it's, it's, there's not instruction going on there. It's evaluation. Okay. Think about it this way. You know, I'm developed and I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of newer to to, to newer science speakers. Man, I went six rounds of candle mass. Awesome. Awesome, man. You went six rounds. Six rounds is pretty close to the end. Well wait, who'd you fight in those six rounds? Well, I fought four new guys, and I fought Ronis and Edmund. Well, wait.
wait a second, who'd you lose to? I lost to Bronis and Edmund. Okay? Where's your evaluation really? You know what I mean? What kind of evaluation is that? Tell you another quick little story. This is a new story. Festival of Maine. Last supper. I won 26 fights in a row. Did lose fights. Fought 28 people all day. 26 guys. I was, I went home and I thought about Palomar for six weeks. I did. And I had to call him up because we go to the same practice. When you come to practice, oh, I, I, I'm painting my dad's toenails. <laughs> I'm going to come fight you. I'll beat you at Maidens. <laughs> Bastard, get out there. You know, because I had been whipping on him and then about me and he put it on me at Maidens and there was no excuses. I mean, he beat me. He just flat beat me. And I thought about what I needed to do the next time that we came out there. It went pretty good for me. Well, I beat him up again. But it goes back and forth. So what I'm saying is, is whenever you become comfortable, really start thinking about your evaluation process. Because it's not, it's not wins and losses, even though that's how ultimately in the end is what kind of fighter are you? I mean, you can stay in a small pool all you want and think that you're a world beater, but if you're not getting out there and, and testing these 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 tools that tools that we're going to help you, then you're, you're not going to have the success that you want. And most fighters don't think about it in that regard. They all think about it as a being king, being dude, being a knight, you know, winning. So, uh, okay, let's talk about training versus spar. All right. Training is not competitive. Training is slow. Training sucks.
coming from and what exactly um, that, that we're trying to do. So training. All right, again, training. It's not competitive. It's slower. It sucks because it's tedious. You're, but you learn a lot more, and we have to do it with direction, purpose, and then the correct knowledge. And with, with the employing the correct knowledge. Okay, what is sparring? People think that fight practice is training. going and working on stuff and stuff is happening at full speed because if you don't get it, you're never, you're never going to grow as a fighter either. You, know? you, you become a textbook fighter, you know, but there's no actual real uh, performance or applications that are, are carried out on, that, on the field. Sparring is important because it's competitive. A lot of people are not competitive, and this is a, a thing that I struggle with because I'm hyper competitive. I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll compete you for guts on your races on the floor. I don't care. I mean, Whatever, let's have a competition. Uh, so, if you're not having a competitive environment, a lot of people don't know how to deal with evaluations when they happen in tournaments, or with, when somebody that is hyper competitive kind of you know comes out because those types of individuals are typically aggressive and they're in your space, and there's all kind of mental stuff that's going on, and people just don't know how to deal with that that conflict or conversation. Um. We talked about it being at full speed. Sparring's fun. Man, who doesn't just love going out there and just, just ripping it? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's laid back, there's no structure, you just go out there and, you know, so we're doing all the stuff, again, with no direction and no purpose. Again. So you got to have them open, all right? So make sure that we're balancing them properly. So this is something to consider. This is a sticking point for a lot. Fighting two nights a week. Maybe we should give up one of those nights and not fight twice a week. Some people go, oh. Maybe we should take one of those nights and train instead of fighting. Now, if I get you to fight twice a week and train, woo, I'll take that all day long, but I'm not I'm not I'm trying I'm trying not to be greedy, okay? Because there's other stuff that I'm gonna ask you to do that you gotta plug in during the week. Okay? Because remember we got Elwood. So, training, awesome, if you approach it correctly. I don't have to get an armor to train. I just wear a helmet, a couple guys with locked eyes, because, you know, that's the stick, I freaked out, it's easy to deal with. All you need to train, sword, shield, or if you're going to do pole arm, doesn't matter. All right. So a helmet, spear, put a helmet. And all you're doing, you're doing it slow. And we're going to get into some little drills here real quick, some really quick training drills. But I wanted to talk about the difference between training versus sparring. Okay. Um, and just remember, I mean, the point of all this is the more time that you spend with anything, the quicker you're going to make it. Okay. We'll be able to identify those deficiencies and with the proper coach we can train those out quickly. And, and we see those deficiencies through training. I'm going to have you come up because I know that you know the one through six drill. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to have you stand there and I'm going to have you, you can even do it with uh, your sword and your shield. And uh, now, when people see the one through six drill, I know about this, do you? They think, they think the one through six drill is designed so that they can race from point A to point B and learn how to do the windshield wiper. Windshield wiper is bad. The combination is a bad guy. It's a waste of your time. Okay. Okay, guys, go ahead and get in here. You stand. Do you think that... Don't block. Okay. I'm not going to strike. Don't block. Do you think this is a more effective attack? Okay. Or do we think this is more effective? Which, which one killed me? Alright. Americans used to have squad and squad and squad. 
squadron B-19, B-24, B-52. Yeah, we're going to drop so many bombs, we'll kill them all eventually. Yeah, that worked for a time. Well, that worked. That worked 10 years ago in a fight. Doesn't work anymore, guys. That worked 15, 20 years. If fighting is advancing at such a rapid rate, it's changing so quickly that if you, employ, if you don't employ new training techniques, you're going to be left, left behind. Even people that stopped fighting three years ago that are ever at a very high level and have come back, it is just zoom past them. And you, you just better stay on top of it and you better employ good practices because if you don't train these methods, you're going you're to have trouble when you go out of your little pond. So, what do the Americans do now? We get these crazy planes that are called stealth aircraft. We get these bombs that are laser guided. It's one bomb. They go down to the earth, you know, half a mile and blow up. Alright? Everybody's dead every one day. Alright. Different approach. Okay. So think about it in those, 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 those terms. It's an economy of energy and it's the execution of effective force. So the one through six drill, okay? This is the one through six drill. One, two, three, no, I'm trying not to strike my friend here. Four, five, six. Okay, those are the target areas. Okay, how we do the one through six drill is we go. this up a little bit because then what we do is we go one, three, two, four. All right, you see where this is going. Okay. Where people get in trouble is, let's see, I don't want you to stand up here so they can see. Uh, there's a fashion bucket. Off hand. Okay. Now when we talk about recovery, okay, we talk about recovery, different ways to recover. Okay. So when I do this, I want you to look at the different ways that I'm recovering. I'm not going to recover the same exact way every single time because if I do divide by my divide and ten will be incorrect and I'll get injured. Okay. People can't do this. And this is what they want to do. They want to throw and then they want to do this again. That's not going to kill anybody. Or run on him because he's got 24 inch form. But normal human beings Okay, so we throw, okay, now we can recover, we can throw again, okay, so if we're going to go four, if we're going to go four, five, four, five, okay, see what happens there, do a little squat when I recover, okay, another way of recovering four, five is this, so you see how I walk to the sword, but I recovered, I didn't do this, not a race, guys, you try to race, you're going to go slower, you must have proper recovery, so that you can execute your delivery in the correct fashion. So, if we're going to do five, six, we're going to go five, six, okay, turn the sword over. All right, the point of this whole drill is, is we, it allows us to understand our body mechanics, range, shot selection, shot delivery, shot recovery, in a fashion so that we can strike whatever our opponent is allowing us to strike. We talked about targets that we can see. We talked about targets that we cannot see. We talked about targets that we create. For example, okay, by me doing this, all right, that creates a variety of targets that I can now strike. Okay, big one. Okay, I can go, I can go six. I can go five. Okay, it's not designed so that you can go one, one, one. We don't, we don't want that. But we do want the ability to be able to strike offside and onside if need to, or we can strike on, on again. People are always going to go on side, offside, or offside, onside. They get this windshield wiper motion and they're throwing mud at the wall 
and they're not actually looking at what their targets are available. 